to fix errors. The queen is back. Go TV. Love it. Welcome back to The Loop. We are bold and fresh. Look at our lives in Kenya. If you're just joining us, we're discussing the issue of cyberbullying. Have you ever been a victim of bullying on the internet? You can let us know using the hashtag LoopK24. And of course, the WhatsApp number is on the screen right now. Tell us what your experience has been with cyberbullying on the internet. Have you ever been bullied on the internet? That's what we're asking tonight. And that's the conversation that's going on. Now, you know, I have been looking at how Kenyans behave online. Mm -hmm. And like uh, Piera said, you will always find that a certain demographic of Kenyans who come at you, you know, uh, in, in, in all sorts of ways. And I think um, the reason why that happens is because we have uh, a situation in Kenya where people are going through so many difficult things at once. Mm. Uh, you know, you've got trauma that you've grown up with. You've got issues that you've never resolved. Uh, you feel that... Um, you know, the government is the one that is completely messing up your life. Mm -hmm. You look at somebody who's doing better than you and think that should have been you. You know, so mm. you're carrying this whole bag of issues that we don't deal with, you know. And so when you get online and you have a chance to just lash at somebody, you, that person pays for all the problems that you're going through. Everything. So. Everything that you're going through, which is why you find like even border border guys will be on the road stoning, mm. burning people's cars, and you're like, mm. where's all this anger and aggression coming from? And I think it's because us as Kenyans don't have healthy ways in which we can vent. We don't have healthy ways in which you know we can release. We don't have avenues in which you can deal with your trauma and the issues right. in a way that is healthy and in a way that is value adding. That's why I think. People feel if you can't punch up at the people who you think are causing your problems, mm -hmm. you punch those around you mm -hmm. and those who are under you. Because why, why in God's name are they doing better than you, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting perspective. We did look up some facts about, um, you know, cyberbullying and what, why are Kenyans exactly as you're asking? Why are we doing so badly when it comes to this thing? What mm -hmm. is going on with us? And um, in April of 2020, the United Nations Office for Drugs and Crime ranked Kenyans as the worst bullies on Twitter. Isn't that shocking? Like no, of all the things to shocking. Shocking. all the things to win in the world. Is this it, is I've, it. I've seen the battles between KOT and, and Nigeria else and, and everyone. And everyone that's else. true. That's true. Kenya but, always wins. I should tell you something. We're doing <laughs> <laughs> we're doing that badly. Um, but Linda, there's something you were bringing up that you said you wish you knew about Catherine's organization because you wish you knew. Um, you know, what, what consequences exactly. you could exert on know. those people. I didn't know yeah. there was any legal recourse you could take mm -hmm. against people who are bullying you on the internet. I didn't know that there was somewhere you could even report it. I didn't know that you could go and find the, the originating tweet and create a case about it. And I wish that organizations like yours are doing a great job. I spoke to her outside and she told me a bit about it and I was so impressed. I'm like, but why aren't you loud enough? I want it screamed at me. Okay, I want to see okay. it. <laughs> so if you're at home and you've been bullied, lean in. Catherine, tell us. Number one, what do we do? You've been bullied. What do you do? Where do you start? Um, so you could start first. Let's start platform, then um, Kenyan reporting. Okay. So on platform, if you're on Twitter, and I think this is one thing I have a problem with because they don't also strive to make their reporting loud enough, but is that you can, whatever, inst whatever platform you use, so if it's Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, there are actually ways in which you can report. So we see in that app, there's like, so for Twitter, they've tried to make it really simple. So where, where you have a tweet, I think that like three dots down, I think it's either down or up, but when you click on it, or when you just put a cursor on it, there's like report at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so there's report and it says, you, you just, um, you click on that and then it says report what, and then the user account and everything else, and you can report that account. What they will do after you report is Twitter will investigate. And then now, if, the, and if, you're, like re, if you're reporting or your harassment mm -hmm. actually meets the standards or violates the community standards, what they will do is they will either take that content down or suspend the account of the person who actually harassed you. Okay. So then, that's one thing. Okay. Then legally, Kenyan so judiciary, where do you start? Legally because what you described... Is simple. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Like walking into a police station and saying they call me fat. Like right. they're laughing at you. You know, or someone said I should have been aborted. So you're here. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? Um, so when you have this, what you're supposed to do is, so there is a website in Kenya called um, the Cybersecurity Incidents Response Team. 
it's a multi-stakeholder agency that's run by the communications authorities. Say that one again. Okay. The Kenya? Kenya um, Cyber Security Incident Response Team. So okay. it's like K-E-C-I-R-T. Okay. Um, so it's, it's on Twitter and they have a website and it's run by the communication authority. I think they have um, offices on Mayaki. Mm -hmm. But what they do is that this multi-stakeholder organization that has um, semblance from DCI, um, I think they also have some investigative agencies. It sounds who so organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. they have. So DCI actually has a unit that investigates computer crimes. Nice. Um, they do, but the the problem is like when you I think when you report to the actual police because I don't think they'll take your like, complaint <laughs> seriously. I, th I think there's also a loophole <laughs> kind of in law where there's freedom of speech where you know mm. I can say I don't like some certain things about people, yeah. and then there is now actual like victim blaming or whatever else happens online there's a, like a gray area where it's like where does my free speech stop mm -hmm. and your uh, mental well-being begin kind of thing okay so um let me just read okay so when you report to the cyber incident response team what they'll do is they'll just take up your claim and they can investigate so the process for reporting is really simple it's just like you take the url you just if it's an oh. email or anything you just write your name you give out your email and then just the details of whatever it is they ask you on the platform okay now to free speech and online violence so the Kenyan constitution does guarantee you the right to free speech. In Ad and Article 83, you have this right to free speech. You can say anything you want, to impart ideas. However, that speech is not unlimited. Like there is a balance to where your speech, your right ends, and you know, your right ends and mine begins. Right. So when it comes to, and there are prohibited types of speech, like speech that, speech that incites violence or that geared towards hate speech, and this is prohibited speech within the constitution like there's no way you can be allowed to do that so there's no mm -hmm. way that you can say you have freedom of speech to start inciting other people to commit violence or to start um committing acts of violence okay. against other people okay yeah. okay so unfortunately we're out of time can you imagine <laughs> I and i i fast. need i fast. need a hard hitting fact from <laughs> each of you ladies like after your experience given what you know now and what this has done to your life what would you tell the hateful people on social media? Yes. I think this is for everyone, not just hateful people. <laughs> Anybody who uses the internet and has access to the internet, treat the internet like a public toilet. You want to leave it as clean as possible for the next person because you want it to be left clean for you. So we need to be responsible for what we put out there because at the end of the day, if the mirror is shown back at us, will we be okay with that? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here. I'm not even sure to say my. <laughs> <laughs> Just say I, it. I mean, let, let me yeah. ask here. Yeah, apart from you know calling 911 or whatever it is that you guys have to report, <laughs> there are some people you know. Yeah. You know, I know Valentine said this about me. How about you just approach him like, yo, you said this about me. You know, I can get you detail. We're all IT specialists. I mean, we know these things. Yeah. I can search for those people and just deal with them. Is that illegal? No? Okay, anyway, I'm just saying. Sarah wants to know now where can yeah. my violence yeah, like, begin? No, but it's a valid hard. question. It's a valid you know, question. Yes, mm -hmm. go on. Like, we've really worked hard. Yes. Somebody can say something today and my entire job is gone tomorrow. True. I mean, I need to protect what I have. Somebody can say something mean about my baby, God forbid, I'll just go down with them. I, I'm not violent. I'm just saying it's nice also to protect what you know. If you talk about, or if she says something mean about, about me and I know her, I'll just, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna come in. I'm like, yo, you said this about me, what's up with that? Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about yeah. it. But mm -hmm. for those you don't know, always delete. Don't even read. Yeah. And I remember the president the other day said he's leaving Twitter. I mean, yeah. if you see really it's too much for you, just leave it. Yeah. You don't have to keep opening your... I mean, KOT your will have your heart racing and sweating. Yeah, and like me, I don't even remember the yeah. last time I saw Kenini uh, Twitter, to be honest. Ah, I don't. Maybe okay. somebody tells me something and then I'm like, why are you telling me? I'm ah. like, you, where could you? Why are you telling me? Because your friends are actually the worst people. Mm -hmm. Be careful. They're the ones who bring you the... Tr the, 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 the trash. Right. The trash. That yeah. Block okay. friends. Yeah. 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 They want you to know. Okay. So you can... Okay. You know, you we can need your hard-hitting fact. Like, what... I, th I think I want to know legally, what is the legal recourse? So there's, um, there's CA, there's all that. What else can be done from a... Um, can I sue for defamation? Can I sue yeah, for you can. Yeah. But even from a lawmaker standpoint, is our law sufficient to deal with cyberbullying? Or there, are there loopholes in there that need to be cleaned up? Wow. So that's actually quite dramatic. Um, the law that deals with this is the Computer Misuse and Cybercrimes Act. 
And um, what happened is the law was passed, but it has numerous provisions that are challenging for when it comes to freedom of expression. One, because when you're legislating, you need to be able to balance out the interests of everyone. So in as much as I am an advocate for dealing with online violence, we need to make sure that the provisions in the law are not again used to harass someone else. Right. So I'll give you an example. Cybercrime legislation or online cyber harassment legislation has been used to harass human rights defenders in other countries before. Aww. And so there needs to be that balance. But I would say this, um, the, the act that we have now is currently operational, but um, it was challenged and the High Court upheld, that um, upheld the fact that the act is constitutional and so now it's running. Um, the, the petition was by Bloggers Association because again, because of their online freedoms, they are afraid that they might be victimized by the act. Right. But then now, it's subject to appeal. However, it was also subject to another court case by the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. by the Senate, no. um, when it was challenging the fact that the National Assembly actually passed this law without consulting it, and oh. so they have nine months to figure that out, and so it is, uh, so the implementation of this law is also problematic. So we really watch this case. Okay. It's not been fully, like they don't have time to actually fully operationalize it. Okay. So just maybe watch the space and support the petition, I guess. Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. All right, thank ladies, you. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, stay strong and uh, you know, Pierre has got a few ideas <laughs> of how to deal with people online. Um, <laughs> no, as we wait for the nine discuss later. But speaking of later, please don't go too far because up next is Unplugged and I've got a fantastic guest called Sero. She's got some brilliant music that you don't want to miss. We'll be talking about her journey in music and some few interesting facts about her as an artist. That's coming up on Unplugged in a short while, but right now, Valentine's Weekly. So we've heard from the survivors, we've heard from the legal community, and even from you at home, but there's a stakeholder who I want to address, and that is corporate Kenya. They cyberbullying from random people who have maybe three followers, 13 followers, and then there are those who make a living online, and they actually have thousands, some of them even millions of followers, and frankly, they're being fully funded and financed by marketing budgets, and that is corporate Kenya. We've seen some of these influencers excuse sexual assault on women. They've blamed victims of femicide. They pick on specific women and they have managed to silence so, so many women. We've seen these same influencers continue to thrive, drive big cars, have huge careers on, on social media funded by marketing money. As a female consumer, when I see your logo or your brand, you know, financing an influencer who I know has spewed some vile things about women who look, sound, a Kenyan woman, then I know that all you care about is my money and you're not interested at all in my well-being, in my self-expression and in my safety. But you're more powerful than that. It used to be that anyone who had the power to publish anything had to go through hoops. They needed training. They, they had other people who'd look at what they were about to publish and say, good idea, bad idea, drop that. But today's influencers do not have an editorial policy. And you as a marketer, you as a marketing department, you as corporate Kenya can say our dollars will not be spent on influencers and with opinion leaders and even agenda setters who spew violence, who facilitate assault in an unwelcoming environment for women. You can set that editorial policy with your money and I welcome you to do that and that is Valentine's Weekly tonight. I hope you've enjoyed our show. Thank you so much ladies, Linda, Piera and Catherine Asante Nisana. Thanks for and having us. Don't miss the loop coming up. <laughs>